right guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for dropping by. In this video, I'm going to give a quick demonstration of this free t-shirt template that I've created. If you'd like to pick it up, just head over to my Gumroad page. I'll post a link down in the description. It's free. And uh, yeah, you know, with this template, basically it's, um, it can help you quickly mock up a t-shirt design and get a good idea of how it will look on the final product. And um, you know, you can, it's a large enough file that you can also take your idea all the way to completion and finalize it and export the final image right right from here and it'll be the exact dimensions recommended by Redbubble which are if you look at the final uh, export layer here those dimensions are 2875 by 3900 I want to say also that this file type um, the color space that we're working in is CMYK and that's just because you know this is actually going to be printed on a t-shirt you might as well avoid colors that will be altered uh, during a, an RGB conversion so I've, I've gone ahead and made the template in CMYK I think that the color loss uh, for this purpose is pretty negligible and in fact it's probably better to get more accurate colors uh, to work with um, right away so yeah there's that and um, yeah, guys, um, you know, making t-shirts is something I do for fun. Some of you guys know I've got I've got a few t-shirts and phone cases and such up on Redbubble. And uh, it's not going to make you rich, but, you know, if it, it feels good when you get an email here and there where somebody buys something and you're just like, oh, I just made four bucks. And somebody wrote me a little note and said, hey, this is so cool. Thank you. And it's like, no, thank you. To me, you know, it's like it's a lot of fun. And you never know when inspiration is going to strike. So, um yeah, I made this template, and I, I, I've been using it for a long time, but I decided it would be cool if I just shared it with you guys. So, yeah, if you've, if you've ever had one of those, like, really cool ideas hit you, you know, and uh, you're just like, oh, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Why don't you just go ahead and give it a shot and, like, throw it down and, and just try, you know? You never know when someone's going to think that something that you've made is cool. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. I've shown you about the final artwork area in this uh, middle layer here um, this is where you're meant to sketch out and compose and uh, sort of keep all your artwork and all the components of your artwork before you decide to finalize now here um, what we're going to do today is I'll show you in just a moment this is where I've got a sketch sort of residing um, yeah let's let's talk about that a little bit I, I basically I went over to the <laughs> I went over to the red bubble page and um, I was looking at their uh, recommended, you know, I was just kind of doing a little review before I made this video. And uh, one of their example images was like a tiger on a clock. And it was like really cool. It was all neon blue and pink and purple and stuff. So I, I just got tiger in my head. So I went and I found a cool reference image. I, I, I sketched up a little design for a t-shirt. And uh, what I'm going to do here is kind of just explain how I sort of design this for use for myself. Um, so down here on the bottom right, you, you can see we've got all these um, t-shirt, basically these are all of the available fabric colors on Redbubble. Um, and, and uh, you know, of course this is not including the graphic tees and stuff, which that's a whole different animal. Um, but yeah, these are all the basic t-shirt um, fabric colors. So what the way I designed this was basically you come up here and you select your t-shirt mock-up, right? Grab the color picker tool and then, you know, choose a color that you want to start to work with, right? A gray or a black or, or maybe one of these burgundies or, or dark reds. Um, gosh, I, I don't know where I would really want to start today. Um, I guess we could go black, just or black or, or you know, like... I don't want to totally cop their uh, design flow. I want to do something a little bit off the beaten path. Let's go with like a green for this. Let's just see what, what, what we can do with this green. So then what I would do is I would open up like one of my, uh, my coolers app, right? Let's, um, whoa, right off the bat, I've already got some colors that actually go pretty well with green. But what I will do is I'll try to find a green that matches this green pretty closely. I'll double tap on one of the swatches and select pick color. Now, I could go up here and enter the CMYK information, right? Let's just check out what that is, and let's see how close it looks. You know, the Coolers app is operating in a different, 
a slightly different color space than, than what I have assigned to this project file. But we maybe we can still get something a little close. I'll, I'll go to the HSL sliders, right? Um, no, 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 I'm sorry, the CMYK sliders. All right, and let's check it out. We've got 86% cyan. Holy moly, that's a lot of cyan. And already it's looking pretty darn close. Um, 35? Actually, I think that 31 looks a little bit closer. I'm going to keep it there. So I want to try to treat my eyes as the, the, the definitive judge here. Wow, that is a lot of yellow in here. Let's let's see what happens if I just obey what the CM, CMYK sliders say. Okay, we got 35 and then 15. All right, man, that, that is not even similar at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this back down to something a little bit closer, right? Maybe there's more cyan in there than I supposed. Okay, that looks about right to me. That's that's similar enough that I can I can feel okay with it. So I'll hit apply. I'm gonna lock that into place, right? And by the way, I am not the one to do things ultra scientifically all the time. Um, and as you can see, I'm sort of winging it, right? But I'm just trying to give a demonstration of how you might use this template and the way I designed it to be used. So from here, I'll let coolers do its work for a minute while I take a sip of cup of coffee. I'm gonna, um, or I take a sip from this cup of coffee. I'm gonna generate some palettes and see if I like anything. That one, automatically I like that. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, export this palette. I'm gonna go to image. I will, I'll, I'll keep the CMYK labels and then I'll export it. It'll give me all these options, but really I just need to copy it, then tap and hold with my finger and then paste. And I've got that there. And what I'll do is I'll kind of get that out of the way with the move tool, bring it over here for a minute. Actually, if I uh, hold one finger, grab the handle and rotate, it'll snap it into a nice upright um, position, which is cool. And uh, yeah, I really like that one a lot. Let's see if I can't find another one that's really cool. The blues are kind of rocking, but you know, I'm working. I'm working with a tiger here. I think I need something more fierce than that, like um, something a little more hard hitting. That's almost too hard hitting. It's almost like a national flag or something. Whoa, that is super cool. Um, all those greens and blues. Jeez Louise, that's cool. Okay, let's uh, let's think clearly about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab onto these two just. Or that one. I, I'm going to just grab that one. I think that forest green is dark enough where it could be like a... It, it could... We could just use a black, you know? But dang it, that's cool. All right, what if I just hold on to that for a minute and then... Man, that's pretty cool too. Um, wow. Purple, you know it. Purplish blue. Come on. Come on. How cool is that? Let's let's see what that looks like. And you know, guys, we can always you can always just double tap, right? Uh, on one of the swatches and then add a couple of colors. Let's add a few more. Holy moly, what are we getting into? I'm looking for something like Ooh. Yeah, I'm looking for some yellows. I'm looking for something to make this palette pop like ultra poppy blues and yellows I kind of like that one I kind of like the purple but and here's another thing you can also just tap and hold and kind of drag things around let's see come on it's ultra saturated, right? All the colors that are coming back are like super, super saturated. And let's uh, let's do a little bit of arranging here. I want to go from green to blue. 
That yellow is not quite right. It's not quite what I'm looking for. Although, I think that bright green could be really neat, too. This this is going to be one funky tiger, guys. All right. You might be getting tired of this. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll just get rid of that. We'll go from here, and I'll find a yellow that complements these colors. Like a, I know I'm looking for maybe even like a like a magenta or something really funky like that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and bring it out, and we'll, we'll export it. Copy the image, I'll go with the CMYK labels, I'll export, copy, paste, straighten her up, and bring her down here, and now we got a place to start. Deselect with the X, get this out of here. All right, cool. Now, let's, uh, Let's uh, zoom in here a little bit. First, I'm going to bring this down and uh, put it with my other palette, right? Let's make sure that everything's nice and neat first. Bring all this stuff down. We've got those tucked away looking nice. All right, we're good to go. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Um, my tiger, I can't really see that red against the green so so as well as I would like. I'm gonna go ahead and what I can do is, if you've ever got like a pencil drawing that you've done and you can't really see the um, the lines, well, what you can do is you can go to effects and hit a color overlay and you can change the color of the overlay. It, it's automatically defaults to black, which is fine. Um, I wanna, I actually was imagining that it would be like some kind of a bright blue like that. That'd be, that'd be fine. Cool, and I can work with that. That'll be my underdrawing. All right, so how do I want to play this? Right off the bat, I want to kind of play around with the colors just to see where I'm going with it. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, let's see, I have played around with this earlier. Let's, let's make a few document palettes, right? So that way we can switch between the colors super easily without having to pick them each time. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go add document palette, right? I'll grab the color picker tool and I'll just go in here and I'll, and I'll hit them one by one, add current and fill the palette. And we just repeat this process until I get all these soaked up. Cool. We'll call this one a uh, tiger one. I found a cool trick with the the, um, the scribble feature. If you write your first letter super big, it'll automatically uh, kind of be, make it a capital letter. Tiger one, there we go, and hit OK. And then I'll do another one, add another document palette, and we'll we'll soak up those blues and purples and stuff. I I, I know I'm. I'm going to find a happy medium between these two palettes. I know this is kind of where I want to be, but the, the point is is you know, if you're if you if you've got an idea for a for a t-shirt, you want to consider the fabric that it's going to be printed on as part of the design. Um there's nothing I I can't stand it when I'm like surfing around on Redbubble sometimes and I see like these t-shirts and they're they're printed on like this hideous fabric color that doesn't complement the design in any way and I'm just like, "Man, what what are you thinking?" I know there's a lot of guys out there that are just like rushing to like, you know, catch the latest fad or the latest trend. And they're just like slapping weird designs on t-shirts and just, just to have it up in the shop for some unsuspecting, you know, bifocal wearing, you know, um, ant or something to come along. We're like, well, that's nice. That's a nice design. I don't know. I don't want to be one of those, <laughs> one of those guys. Um, let's see here. I'm going to start with the dark green and, and go from there. Let's see. Uh, add current fill the palette. And remember that second green, actually the, the, the main green, we don't even have to actually add that to the palette. In fact, I'm going to actually delete that. If you just double tap on it, Oops, sorry, tap and hold, you can remove it, remove that color from the palette. I'm going to remove that color. I don't need it because the fabric is that color, right? I could have done this one. I could have done that to the other colors as well. I think I know where I'm going with this. 
And, you know, the great thing about um, printing and stuff like that is um, you've got to keep in mind that that when this shirt is going down, um, it actually will end up being a, a four-color process of some kind. So automatically, cyan and magenta and yellow are on the table right off the bat, right? So um, that's another thing to consider. I can add those colors to my palette uh, freely. I definitely think I want some magenta in here. We, we want to go with like a nice yellow for the eyes, right? So maybe let's uh let's have some fun. I will throw some magenta in here. If I go back to my color wheel, right? First, I'll rename this. I'll rename this uh, Tiger Two. Cool. Okay, and then um. Yeah, let's just start goofing around with this in Pixel Persona until we find something that we like. Um, I'm not really sure how this, how long this video is going to run, guys. Um, um, and in fact, I might even what I'll do is I'll I'll throw this tiger sketch and these palettes up. Or no, 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 I won't do that. I don't want to influence your your your, your flow, man. I, you know, okay, so like, um. And anyway, maybe I'll really like this tiger design by the end of this video and I'll want to put it up in my own shop. Maybe that's what I'll do. Anyway, let's get into it. Pixel layer. All right. Well, right off the bat, I know I want to go with some... You know what? Maybe maybe we don't want a pixel layer just yet. I want to figure out what's going on with that circle in the background. I'm, I'm envisioning like this kind of a gradient. Let's uh, pull, pull an ellipse out and get rid of the stroke, right? And then uh, we can start playing with that. I'll bring it down below the sketch and uh, let's get funky right off the bat. Whoa, man, see, that's the thing. You always find something you like. Now, there are rules for gradients that you might want to obey uh, that uh, Redbubble has posted on their website. And um, if I can remember correctly, the 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 way the way it goes is black fading to nothing is okay. White fading to nothing is kind of tricky. One color fading into another col color is um oh it's okay and it's fine, but then if you have a color that fades to nothing, that's hard for them to print. So you want to consider that as you're designing. I really love this uh purplish color here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off for a moment. I'm going to duplicate that layer. And then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start experimenting with colors because I just I really like the way that looks right off the bat. I'm into it. Um, let's uh, go to my Tiger Tiger Two palette, and um, let's talk. Let's look and see what happens when I throw some cyan in there. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! That's pretty. It's crazy how something as simple as a gradient can set you off. I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate that. Turn it off. Um, let's uh do what we mentioned earlier, and uh, I'll I'll take a look at um, take a look at getting some magenta in there. I want it to be on the same saturation and 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 lightness scale as the blue. So what I'll do is I'll just uh I'll add a uh, I'll add a point about here, about midway on the tiger. And then I'll just slide this over into the magenta area and see what happens. It's it's a little overpowering. I feel like um and man, what if it was like one of these this cool warm oranges? Um from what I understand, you know, uh if you I'll try to find a graphic for it, but basically in the CMYK color space, you have much better chances of matching like purples and magentas and reds and oranges better than you do with like greens and blues because they go too far out out into the spectrum so like a, a really fun color like this like it's almost uh it's like an orangish orangish magenta of some type what if i change this to purple and then this to blue that could be cool. I don't know. 
I'm kind of in love with this one. It's 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 too cool for school. I'm really into it. Maybe we can work that magenta or orangish color into the scheme a little bit later. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go over here and select that color and then add it to my palette so I don't forget about it because it was really cool. I don't I don't want to leave it out. All right. So we've got us a dot that we can be proud of or a, a sunset or whatever that is that uh, we can feel good about. Okay. Cool. Now what? Let's uh let's deal with um our tiger here. I'm gonna actually just turn this off for, for a little while and start sort of feeling it out. Um do I want to use vector tools on this bad boy? I guess look, for the in the interest of time, how about I just start with a mock-up now? Because if I try to do this entire design on video it might get a little tedious to watch so let's just see what the possibilities are by doing a quick mock-up in pixel persona and then i'll call it a day and i'll let you get to your own business again um cool so i'm gonna go over here to my comics kit i just love all these brushes these are my this is like my go-to kit that i made for myself it's also for sale in my gumroad shop but basically just I slowly, you know, I draw a lot of cartoons and stuff in my spare time. And I'm really working on it, you know. Like, when I was in high school and middle school, I, I had I had dreams of making comics and stuff like that. But a lot of stuff happened that prevented me from doing that. And uh, these days, I'm sort of recapturing. I'm making up for lost time, you know, like sketching a lot, drawing comics and c cartoons and such. So uh, I'm using this kit more and more and expanding it as much as I can when I get time. Um, let's just, uh, let's just quickly, like, get this going. I've got the pixel layer selected. Let's get into it. I'm just going to kind of wing it and it's not going to be super. Remember, this is just a mock-up. I'm not looking to, uh, I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel or anything or, or create a finalized design here. I'm just kind of mocking up and, and inking my drawing. I know that I want black outlines or at least a dark a dark green for the outline. Again, you know that forest green that we've got in our palette here, we can use that for the inks, but for right now, and that's easy enough to do show, using that FX trick that I showed you by adding a color overlay to the inks, I can actually change these colors quite easily. Um, right now, I'm just kind of seeing, I want to I wanna concentrate on the line work a little bit. If I were doing this with a vector tool, perhaps I would, uh, on the face at least, I would employ some kind of symmetry um, device that I that I could use to make the design, you know, more pleasing and more symmetrical. And I might speed portions of this up. I and post. I uh, just uh, just kind of having fun talking. I figured um, maybe some of you guys will, you know, I get, I, I'm, I keep getting all these uh, YouTube um, emails up to creators about, you know, and, and I see all these videos um, coming out lately about what the algorithm wants and things like that and how in 2021, the short video is king and all this stuff. And, but you know, it's like, I don't know about you guys. Um, maybe some of you are like this. Maybe some of you are not. I know. I mean, we all got things to do, right? We can't all just like, we can't sit around and watch like 30 minute videos every day. I get that. But, you know, sometimes when I get home from work and I'm just chilling, like, you know, my wife's busy doing something. I like, I want to throw on like a long play and like just kind of hang out with somebody, you know? Um, I don't. I don't see anything wrong with a nice long play, like just chit-chatting and, and grooving and, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's not, nothing wrong with a little chit-chat. Man, this dude's looking fierce. What is going on?
All right, man. Looking at this tiger compared to the reference image that I used to sketch him out, I feel like he's a little squat. Like, he should have been taller. I should have made him taller. I feel like I... I kind of ignored his neck. Um, I'm not going to mess with it, though. We're already We're already into it now. We should just keep going. Maybe once I... Once I uh, figure out exactly what I'm going to do with this little, this mock-up or this uh, kind of, you know, right now I'm just kind of sketching. I'm just fleshing out my idea. Just kind of getting into it, figuring it out, like what I want to do. need a little more mystery near those eyes right there we go maybe a little more here not too much we don't want him to look like he's been drinking like milk or something like that and like he's got milk dribbling off of his uh his chin hairs it makes him look too cute I would probably doing this with vector tools, you know, you could, I, I, I drew this in a very, um, like I, I was, I guess I was feeling like the, the, the angles on this one, you know, cause it's very angular. I would, I, I might even play that up in the final design. Tell you what, I'm not sure exactly when I will finish this, but if you're interested after this is up, maybe I'll post a link to the final product and I'll post it up in my Gumroad shop. I just want to talk about it, you know, like in the end, basically what we're going to do is once you've got your design finalized, you just, you, you take this layer, you tuck it into this layer and you export it and it'll be at the exact same size that uh, Redbubble re uh, recommends for all their, uh, for their, for their t-shirt designs. And so you can, it's uh, super convenient. And, and, you know, if you want to get better quality out of it, now this is at the maximum DPI allowed. Um, but if you want to even be even safer about it, you can actually export it at like 1.5 or times two the, 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 the dimension. So you get an even larger file at an even nicer DPI and the computer will have no trouble in, um, uh, you know, making this into a, uh, a very high quality printed design. That works. All right. Cool. Now. Let's uh let's start talking about um uh, our our tiger's um colors here. I'll, I'll call this we'll call this one inks. Hit OK, and then I'll add another pixel layer down here, and we'll start playing around with some color. Um, and in fact, I want to make sure that this gets incorporated into that situation. I don't know if I would like my tiger to be that color or not, um, but it's looking like he's definitely going to be like a cyan or a purple or something like that. Let's um, let's grab. I'll grab my um, opaques and flats brush. We'll come back to the palette. I kind of want to get this green in there too. What what about that? How does that look? You could just go nuts and do like this kind of camo thing, or maybe the maybe that green is like begging to be the eyes, but it's not bright enough, I think. And remember what we said about greens in CMYK. Let's uh let's 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 seek out that yellow. Or do we even need that? Whoa, whoa, man! I really like that. Okay. Let's um. Oh my gosh. That's too cool for school. All right. I'm going to start playing around with some cyan while I just enjoy. I just want to enjoy those eyes for a little bit. Man, that's so fun. It's like, gosh, that's so cool. That purple. Maybe, maybe somehow that purple 
we incorporate the gradient into the design. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of laying down color and sort of seeing what's working for me. Is that green's not really doing anything? Like, is it? I don't know. It's kind of cool now. Maybe it is. Let's, uh, bring down my, uh, my size, my brush size here. Let's bring it right about there. That's fine. I kind of like the way that green and purple sort of jive together. They're like, it's, I mean, it's smooth. Maybe that green is meant to be. Yes. I think I think we found it, folks. That green is meant to be. And that red. Yeah. How about that nose? What are we gonna do about this nose? Is it blue? Is that where we're going with this? It's not it's not magenta. Is it? No. That's not right. Um let's uh let's try this forest green. That's not it either. Um I don't know. I don't know what that's I don't know what's meant to be with that. What about this red? I'll tell you what I can do. You know, right now I, I feel like I'm stuck with I'm stuck on this. I'm attached to it already. I'm going to start playing around with some other stuff. I'm going to add another pixel layer. And I've got ideas. Um, that design that was up on the Red Bubble site had like this tiger and a clock. And it was like, I don't know. There was like the paint splatters and everything. And I guess that's where the whole tiger idea started. Maybe I'll just be true to that that inspiration. I've got some splatter brushes in here. Let's uh grab this and... See what happens when I go nuts. I'll bring this down behind the tiger. Increase the size a little bit. It has a ferocity to it. It's almost like this. Does this tiger just like slay something in the background there? <laughs> it almost looks like blood. It's very vivid, but. I don't want it to become like this ominous thing. Let's uh, go ahead and, and, and backtrack a little bit and, and see about grabbing that yellow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the... I'm going to go straight to... Um, let's go to CMYK... Um, Yeah, I'm just gonna go to CMYK and grab straight up yellow. Let's uh, add a pixel layer here just so we can see what might happen if these, uh, whoa. Yeah, the yellow is mucking up the works a little bit, right? Right? Actually, jeez, oh, it's not, we don't want that yellow. We want something a bit more different like this orange yellow that was in the first palette that I found or created rather yeah what about the eyes was it meant to be for the eyes what was it is it kismet let's see What if the the pinkish color, what if that is just like, what if that is meant to be a sort of decorative? And what if the what if the nose is pink? What 
What if those splatters are meant to sort of be in there as part of it? Is this even a tiger anymore? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I mean, look, let's just call it a day, right? <laughs> I'm going nuts here. That yellow is not really doing it for me. The yellow splatter. The yellow eyes, for sure. But the yellow splatter, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Uh, what about that dark green idea that we had? Let's go back and um, we'll do an effects color overlay on that. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to call it black right off the bat. But we can all we can actually use the color the color picker tool here, and we can just grab that forest green and see what happens. So now it's not a black; it's like that forest green color. And that actually, it's it's weird. It's like uh, it softens it up a bit. And I bet you, like if I were to sort of work it, let's see. We'll turn it off. We'll turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on it softens it up so much right i like the way that the black kind of pops out but there's something to be said for the softness of this one and it kind of it's not so like it's not punching you in the face but again that yellow doesn't work i'm, I'm thinking of stuff like the green bay packers or something the yellow is just not doing it for me i turn off the sketch Maybe um, another thing is it's that uh, that that the color in the background is um, what, what were the other ones? Now that maybe that's where we need to be. Yeah, man, that's that's pretty fierce. That's pretty that's pretty intense, man. All right, and then we go back into the eyes, and we figure out exactly what's going on with the with the eyes. I don't, like I said, I don't think it's supposed to be a yellow. I think it's supposed to be something more like, like a, like an orangish color. And we'll we'll we'll, we'll take the lightness up a little bit. And we'll see what we can get with that. Let's uh, grab a brush. Um, just grab uh, the flatting brush. Bring it down the sides just a little bit. Yeah, that's that's good. Perfect. Now that's that is grooving, guys. Something, something. That yellow, I think the yellow can come back into play now. But it kind of just, it kind of just really, what if it's like a sort of a, a rim lighting effect? Like, as if like the light was coming off of that sunset thing going on in the background there. I don't know. Guys. I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Look, when you get done, you know, say you take this all the way through, you go in with your vector tools and you vectorize the crap out of this and just make it into one heck of a design. You just take this, drop it in here, select this part with the selection tool, right? If you turn the mock-up off, you're left with that. Okay? And that's what you're going to export, that space. You don't want to center it because... Basically, you're trying to eliminate extra work for yourself once you upload it to the site, right? And by the way, I'm pretty sure that the size of this document is large enough that if you don't want to use a site like Redbubble, there are hundreds of others. I guess there are anyway. I know that there's like, there's, uh, gosh, how many are there? I don't know. There are, there are quite a few print-on-demand services out there that have pretty good setups that you can use. Society6... Redbubble, um, 
Printful, I guess, is one of them. I, I'm, I'm not sure of all the names of them. Gosh, I don't even know how many there are these days. I've, I, I discovered Redbubble in college. One of my, one of my classmates was like making these goofy drawings, and he was making like a nice little tidy side income while we were in college, just making these goofy little T-shirts for Redbubble, and uh, that's where I first heard of it. And I thought it was kind of crazy at the time, and I was too busy to really get into it. But then later, I just decided to give it a shot, you know. And uh, here we are. I'm talking about Red Bubble on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, guys. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. Again, I'll put this template up on my Gumroad page. Uh, it'll be there before this video uh, hits the old YouTube. So um, if you want to pick it up and have have some fun making some t-shirts, uh, go for it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Keep working hard. You know, Keep practicing. Keep drawing. Um, Take care of your friends and family. Do your best out there. And uh, yeah, we will uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.